All right, this is the Heisman Trophy predictions for 2018. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six awesome sports books. You can find all the information on all that over at tunicatravel.com. You can find the information on us over at winningcureseverything.com. We're going to make it a, a quick video, a quick segment this go around because there's not a lot to talk about. There's only three guys. Yeah, three guys. They all play the same position, and their numbers are all almost exactly alike. Dwayne Haskins from Ohio State, Tua Tonga-Vailoa from Alabama, and Kyler Murray from Oklahoma. Um, let's jump into Haskins first. I think I don't think that he has a real chance to win this. I think it's between Tonga Valoa and Kyler Murray. I agree. Haskins did have an unbelievable year. I think what hurts him the most is the close calls and just the drubbing by Purdue. Uh, the offense could do nothing that evening. They only put up 20 points. And while one game should not reflect an entire season, uh, he has worked his way back into the conversation, and that's that's good on him. Like, Ryan Day has led this offense fantastically. The, the Ohio State offense is the reason why they are the Big 12 champions. Or Big 10 champions, yes, sorry. Right. Correct. Um, so let's let's jump off Haskins. Let's jump into Kyler and Tua. The stats are virtually identical. Yeah. If, if Tua had played the fourth quarter in every game, he and Kyler would be almost the exact same guys. Correct. Exact same stats. Um, Tua has played against five top 50 defenses. I think it's five top twenty-five defenses. If I'm, that, that way. cannot be true. I think it's five top fifty. It's got to be. It's got to be five top fifty. Is way different than top twenty-five. Yeah. Um, because those those forty-five defenses are garbage. Huh? Those top forty-five. The forty-fifth defense in the country is a is a crap defense, Gary. Yeah, probably so. Even still, Kyler Murray played against one top fifty defense. So you said now. Kyler I, Murray now I will look at this the first time. Oh, sorry, Tua. Yeah. Played against. I, I was. Yeah, my bad. I, was my, say, I cannot believe. <laughs> I cannot believe. No. Kyler Murray played against five, and when you thought maybe no. top twenty-five, I was like, "That's not that's Tua." Not true. Tua played against five, okay. and I don't know if it was twenty-five or, or fifty. Either way, that was, Tua played that, against I five of them. That. I would and, believe that. And Kyler Murray played against one. Yes. And that was TCU. So, um, and this is this is by yards per play allowed. This isn't like Army is the eleventh total defense in the country. But they're number eighty-eight in yards well, per play. Hang on, let's 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 see how well they did against Army. He, uh, he only scored twenty-eight, and, and that was with overtime. Um, but the other side of that is twenty-one regulation. That's Army right didn't right. let him have the ball. Yeah, that's Army okay. had the ball for forty-five minutes. That's that's Kyler part. Had it that's okay. Minutes. That's part of it. Right, that is part of it. Um, and he, he did enough to win the ball game. So I, the question that I have about Kyler Murray is like, did Oklahoma just win the lottery, and they got? the two most transcendent quarterbacks in the history of the sport back-to-back? Or is Lincoln Riley just a fantastic system coach? Like, is this a system or is this the guy? Because these two, Baker Mayfield set all kinds of college football all-time records last year. And this year, Murray did even better than that. So you're telling me that the same guy, like I saw Kyler Murray. I saw him at Texas A&M. I don't. He is a fantastic quarterback, and I think that he probably won the Heisman on on Saturday. But if I'm looking at it objectively, I look at Tua got injured on the first drive of the game against Georgia, and ended up eventually coming out. He had three different injuries. He had to go into the tent three times. He wasn't playing like himself. But. Alabama played a, a much more difficult defensive schedule, and Tua still put up less interceptions, comparable yardage, comparable efficiency numbers. Obviously, I'm going to go two on this, but I think that Kyler won it. Who do you think will win? I think, Not who do you want to win. Who do you think is going to win? I think Kyler wins. I think Kyler wins. I think so, too. Um Kyler is a hey, all, what, minus, all these people. All these people are going to do is look at numbers. That's all they're going to do. They're going to talk about the team, and they're going to talk about all this other stuff. The thing that I wish that you were able to do for quarterbacks, I, me and you've had this conversation off air, but since we're doing a really short segment, this is a good opportunity to have this. I think for quarterbacks, every pass that you throw statistically, now not in the way you call the game as if it's an incompletion or whatever, like it can be fumbled. Um, every pass you throw behind the line of scrimmage, is, is considered a handoff. 
you you did not complete a pass. You do not get any yards that happen after that. If if they get tackled behind line of scrimmage, you don't lose those yards. That that is not a pass for you. You might throw it forty yards across the field. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go past the line of scrimmage. And then I think all yards after catch should be divided in two. I think there is something for getting a guy and hitting him in stride or whatever. But when you throw a four-yard slant and a guy takes it 87 yards, which 30% of two is touchdowns, this is not just a knock on Tua because Oklahoma and all the great offenses do this now. You're throwing bubble screens, yeah, and a guy takes it 50 yards, and you say, oh, I threw for 500 yards today. Did you? Did you really? Not, not really. Because that's scheming, and you hit a freak athlete. Now, you got to hit him in stride, and there's some precision to that. You get that. But I think for statistics purposes – I, baseball gets real inside baseball on how they gauge stuff. I wish football would get more analytical on this stuff. If you hit a guy every bit of the yards after catch, you get 50% of it. If he catches it for four yards and he runs it for 40, then you got 24 yards towards your stats. Yeah. That's what you I could, for. I could get down with that. Because I think it levels the playing field as to what the quarterback actually did. If this is going to be a quarterback award, what did the quarterback actually do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, so in that instance, like Kyler ran the ball a lot, a lot, a, lot, a, a lot. whole no, lot. No, no, no. And, and and I think if you look at how they played as quarterbacks, because both of them have elite talent, and and you know you don't play much defense in the Big Twelve, but I think Kyler Murray looked better overall as a quarterback. It, it's hard to say that Tua didn't. I mean, he was pretty unfreaking believable. Oh yeah, but both I, I, both Oklahoma of these guys were. needed. Kyler to oh, do that. correct. Like, every point that they scored, they had to have all season because their defense is that bad. So let me let me turn the question to this then. Do you like that the Heisman doesn't define what a Heisman is? It's not no, necessarily it's, it's, the most valuable. No, it's, it's it's most outstanding player. It's not the best player. No, it's just most outstanding. It's, it's called the most outstanding, which is a very vague term. What, what if you're on a 6-6 six and six team, but you just had highlight reel after highlight reel, but other than those crazy highlights, you you don't have the, the just collection of stats. You don't have 4,000 yards passing. But every completion was like, oh, my God, blew your hair out. Technically, that person could, could win the Heisman. What, what irritates me is like if, if we are going to start giving the Oklahoma quarterback the Heisman every year. But I don't know that we're going to do it every year because I don't know that that guy's going to be there every year. Well, and, and we'll see, right? So this is – I don't know that it's happened where it's the same position for the same team two years, two years in a row. Ago. Um, but that leads me to the question of, is it the coach or is it the guy? And and it could just be that Kyler Murray is as good, if not better than, Baker Mayfield. He's he's kind of a freak athlete. He's absolutely a freak athlete. Um, but the other side of this is, every year, Mike Leach, it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. He is going to put up 5,000 yards passing and 35 to 45 touchdowns. But they never invite that but guy. But they never the invite that guy, even though he has been pretty outstanding. His numbers are very comparable. And and yet Oklahoma, because they run this wide-open, crazy offense, yeah. you know, it, you've with Kyler Murray, you've got a guy that is learning under Lincoln but, Riley who's been there for four years. At Alabama, if you're gonna, with Tua, you've got a first-year coordinator. But it doesn't matter. Y'all are running the same offense. You're running, just because Bama hasn't historically done it, you literally look exactly like Oklahoma offensively. Yeah, Saban has completely changed the offense to look exactly like the Big Twelve offense. Well, it's, it's not. It's not exactly. It is more wide open, but it is not exactly like that. But I'm I'm with you. I know what you're talking about. It's it's much more wide open. I think than it's this. Ever been. I think if Alabama doesn't have the level of wide receivers, not that the wide receivers that play for Oklahoma are schmucks, but if Alabama doesn't have the level of wide receivers, to his numbers aren't close to what they are. You're because probably right. I I would assure you that seventy percent of his passes. Now he's got that deep ball bomb hitting him in stride, perfect. Yeah. But there is at least seventy percent of those passes are all he didn't throw the ball five yards, but he hit a guy that is an absolute monster that can go up, snatch the ball away from somebody else and when he hits the ground he's not falling he's pushing you and he's running at least 25 yards yeah and and at some point and Oklahoma we're, has we're that we're splitting two. hairs it sounds like I'm crapping on Tua and I'm absolutely not we're splitting hairs between the two best players in college football is this the closest Heisman race that, that we've had in I think it's the closest I mean, but it's close because they both play the same position in the same style of offense and they're both from monster programs yeah like we've had probably quarterbacks 
that were both really close in voting, but I think one, the closest was, one was Tim Tebow and one was Sam Bradford. It's just like I think the closest anything alike. voting that there's ever been was Mark Ingram and Toby Gerhardt. You remember him? Oh God. Back how in two thousand nine. How did we want to give how much has college football changed? Uh, Toby a lot. Gerhardt doesn't start today. Uh I agree. I mean, I think the offenses have changed so much. You got a power running back that doesn't catch the ball well. I don't know that that works in college football. It didn't work in the NFL either. No, it's the the games have changed significantly. We both think Murray's going to win it. Yeah, I think uh, I think Murray won it last week. I think the national media now would it surprise me if Tua won? Oh no, it's close. I like, mean, that, that doesn't no. mean it's going to happen just because we both think that way doesn't mean but that I, we could both be wrong. I do think that that Murray had you know championship game weekend. Yep. You got to have your best game. Tua hurt himself and and kept trying to play on it he probably would have been better to just go out of the game i think he, he still could have won it had he just gone I, out i have a philosophy about Tua, but we'll keep it going it has nothing to do with him and the husband that's okay should we should we toss it in should we i think if he's hurt at all he's done everything he could possibly do to be the number one draft pick next year in the draft not next year 2019 but 2020 he would be the first player and this is not my hatred for Alba, he would be the first player that i would absolutely say there is zero reason for you to play next season. We all thought that about Jadavian Clowney. Clowney, I, but he plays defense, and that's a kind of a man's position. And, and you got to show that you can bull rush. And you might be right. Up. He has he done anything to where in twenty twenty he doesn't get called number one, and it doesn't matter who's taken. I mean, you got a point there. He's it. He's you, already he's already done what he needed to do to show I'm going to be the number one draft pick, and all I can do is hurt myself. I, I'm I, with you. I as a as a fan in the SEC, I would love to see it because I don't want to play against him. But I also think, I think this is the first time I believe this is the right move. But I'm becoming more on that line of I don't know if it's just him. I mean, I totally support it. Um, oh gosh, oh god, I love his brother Bosa from from Ohio State. He's like, I got hurt. Screw that man. I might be the number one draft pick this year. Yep. And that's a team that has a chance to play for championship. Don't matter. Does not matter. Go get that money. What did, what's college's purpose? To prepare you for your career. He's done that. He cannot do better than number one. Now you're right. You can't get better than one. It don't work any different. Now you, you got a real good point. Bosa quit, and, and, and I use the word quit not in like a negative term. He, he walked off. He walked off. If I was he, Tua and, used and a, the time to prep. And an offensive tackle steps on my ankle again. Sorry, Nick. I'm out. These yep. ankles, they're important. I got to go. Yep. I'm with you. Anyway. All right. That is our Heisman Trophy predictions for 2018.